like to welcome you to the Midweek Bible Study of the Mount Carmel Church. We're so glad that you're able to, to uh, be part of our Bible study tonight. And as we continue our study in the book of Colossians, we've been looking at verses 1 through 8, and again we will be looking at verses 1 through 8 tonight, just continuing our study of the last two weeks. But looking at this area of Jesus is enough, and uh, you know it comes down to in our lives of just taking time, taking time to understand, taking time to allow Christ to work in our lives, uh, no matter where we're at. And tonight we want to look again at another part of this in the greeting and in the very beginning of Colossians looking and understanding again what Paul is pointing out to the church at Colossae. So let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll continue our study tonight. Dearly Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for this evening, Lord, as we can come to you and, and to look at your word. We thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord, and we just ask for your continued guidance and direction in our lives and in our, in our lives uh, in everything that we do because you are truly enough. I pray for our relationship with you, Lord, that first of all we do, do truly know you as our Lord and Savior. Then as we think of that, Lord, just how important it is for continued um, continuation of just depending on you and to allow you to work in our lives and, and in our own personal lives and our family's life, Lord, and as we even see uh, how that we are to, to allow you to work in the church. I pray for guidance and direction, Lord, as pastor of the Mount Carmel Church. I pray for other pastors in the area, Lord, that you would continue to guide and direct them. We pray for Bible-believing churches, Lord, as today it's, it's getting harder and harder at times to um, continue to um, just present your gospel in a way that that people are willing to, to take it in. And Lord, I just pray for that. I pray for open hearts tonight. I pray for open hearts in our church family. Lord, I pray for, for growth, growth spiritually. Lord, as it's something that in our, each one of our lives, we need to be growing spiritually. And we just thank and praise you for this night. We thank you for our time together. And uh, I pray for all those that may be having issues with health in, in some way or another, Lord, or maybe a family member. We pray for your guidance there in their lives. I pray that they would continue to look to you for guidance. But we thank and praise you for this day, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, as we start our, our study, I want to do a little bit of review, but let me read verses 1 through 8 again. And this is in the book of Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. You know, as you looked at this passage last week, and we'll, we'll just do a little bit of review from last week, and how that Paul was pointing out several different things um, about the church at Colossae, but first of all, we saw in verses 3 through verse the first part of verse 5, the thankfulness for Colossians. You know, as we look at those verses, let me just read them again to you. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope is which, for the hope 
which is laid up for you in heaven. You know, in the first three verses that we see, Paul is already laying the groundwork for what the major teaching of the book of Colossians is. And that is about the supremacy of Christ. You may say, well, well, Pastor, what does that mean, the supremacy of Christ? And I know you looked at it last week, or we looked at it last week, where it literally means all things in heaven and earth are held together by Christ's supreme authority over creation. You know, another word that we often hear from time to time is preeminent. Jesus is preeminent. That means he is first in everything. First in importance, first in honor, and first in exaltation. Well, Paul then focuses on three areas of their thanksgiving. Even though he had never visited the Christians at Colossae, he heard of their faith, he heard of their love, and he heard of their hope. And this is very similar to what he wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, where it says this, We give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. You know, faith is mentioned first because it is the starting place for everything else in the Christian life. Love is important because it, it is really faith in motion. You know, we see that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, where it says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. You know, love is the greatest characteristic and the greatest commandment of the Christian faith. And I just have a question for you as a question for me. Are you exhibiting it in your life today? You know, our shared faith and mutual love result in our common hope, which is laid up for us in heaven. You know that word hope? Well, hope makes all the difference because we have a confident expectation that everything God says in His Word is true today or will come true in the future. And you know, that's something that we all need to think about, including myself. Does everything that we find in God's Word, if we, we say it is true, and we know it will come true in the future, do we have faith in that? Do we have hope in knowing that everything that is said, everything that has been done, will come true? And I just want us to think about that a little bit, because it's so important for us to, to realize that and to think about that in our lives. Well, tonight we want to look at the, the second thing. After he was very happy and, and just praising God for who the Colossian church was, and just talking to them and, and exhorting them in all that he did. And I hope that you saw that last week and thought about that and, and just really understood that, that hope that they had, because they knew what was being said was true. And how that even in our study as we look at it, that Jesus is all that we need. Jesus is everything. And how is that in your life? Well, tonight we want to look at, we need to be thankful for the gospel. You know, Paul's thankful for the faith, love, and hope of the Colossian church. But in verse 5 and verse 6, we see that he is grateful for the gospel itself, because it says there in 5 and 6, of which you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. Again, that word truth. Truth of the gospel in verse 6, which has come to you as it has also in all the world, and is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you, since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. You know, these verses that I just read, have four key elements about the gospel. First, we see that the gospel is the truth of God. You know, the last part of verse 5 helps us to see that our hope, our hope is based solidly. That, that foundation is built 
solely upon the word of truth, the gospel which has come to you. You know, the word of truth and the gospel are the same thing. Gospel simply means good news. And the gospel is to be shared with others because it's the word of truth. And there's no other truth worth proclaiming. The second thing we see is the gospel is for the whole world. You know, Paul's rejoicing because this gospel is going, as we see here, as it, as it says, all over the world. The gospel that has come to the city of Colossae is the same gospel going around the globe. And we think of that, that gospel that we have in our hands, and that we hear, and that we see, and that we re read, that same gospel is going out to all the world. And Paul is praising God for that. You know, God has one message of good news, one word of truth for everyone. And that's why, as the Mount Carmel Church, we are committed to proclaim the good news of the gospel. You know, we shouldn't just focus on our community, but we are called to also impact our families and be supporting those in Christian work throughout the world. Yes, it's important to realize and to reach out into our community, and that's a very important part of our church uh, ministry. But are we willing, also willing to reach out to impact our own families? Are we willing to impact families around us? Are we willing to impact the Christian work throughout the world and be praying for it? That's what we're called to do as a church. The third thing we see is the gospel produces life and growth. In verse 6, it says, And is bringing forth fruit, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. The wording here that we see in verse 6 indicates that there is an energy in the message of the gospel. Because the gospel is alive, it's growing, it's spreading, it's bearing fruit. And it's spreading so much more. You know, when the gospel is heard and believed, lives change radically. You know, I don't know of anything more powerful than the gospel, do you? If you're not experiencing fruit, and you're not growing, I can guarantee that there's nothing wrong with the power source. It's with you. If you're reading God's Word and taking God's Word in and allowing God's Word to penetrate through your life, there's nothing a matter with God's Word. It comes down to what we believe and trust in that hope that we have. You know, spiritual growth should be normal and ordinary for all of us as Christians. Not something that seems extraordinary. You know, from time to time I, I hear people say, Boy, I, I wish I was as spiritually minded as that person. Or I wish I was like that person. Or I wish I trusted like that person. Or I wish I had hope like that person. I just want you to know tonight that all of us can have that hope. That same hope. If we're willing to grow spiritually, if we're willing to, to grow and to, to mature spiritually, the fourth thing that we see about the gospel is the gospel is the grace of God. You know, the last part of verse 6 refers to the grace of God in truth. You know, the message of God's truth is a message of, of grace. You know, you and I cannot earn acceptance before God. But salvation is by grace alone through faith. You know, we don't have to jump through certain hoops or follow some man-made regulations. You know, many people think that. You know, one of the false teachings in the church at Colossae was legalism. And so Paul established that the gospel is the good news of grace. We receive what we don't deserve. Not when we're good enough, but when we recognize that we're bad enough to be disqualified from it. You know, of all the world religions, Christianity alone offers salvation without demands for our works. 
You know, the gospel of grace is truly good news. It brings faith. It brings love. It brings hope. And it brings a desire to share it with others. Now we see the last thing that Paul is pointing out in these verses that he's thankful for. He's thankful for Epaphras. Because in verse 7 and 8 we see that Paul was thankful for Epaphras because he had been the one to share the life-changing message of the grace, of that word grace with the Colossian people. Because as it says, as you also learned from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant who is faithful minister of Christ, on your behalf, and in verse 8, who also declared to us your love in the Spirit. Epaphras is faith, love, and hope in action. He illustrates that the good news of the gospel of grace must be proclaimed. Paul developed people like Epaphras wherever he went and reminded the Colossians that they had first heard the gospel from one of their own. Because he was a dear fellow servant and a faithful minister of Christ. He faithfully took the message of grace to them and as a result, he could be trusted. You know, Epaphras both evangelized Colossae and edified the believers through his teaching. The word learned is the basis of the word, as we look at it, the word disciple. You know, God's plan has always been to use human instruments to bring forth the gospel to a dying world. Do you know that each one of us as Christians are an instrument that can be used by Christ? It's that we are an instrument that can be used in a very powerful way for Him. Epaphras was faithful in spreading the good news. He was faithful in spreading the seed. You know, as Christians, we are to, to make disciples. We are to spread the gospel. We are to share love that has been shown to us, to others. And we are like farmers spreading the seed, spreading the seed, spreading the word. But allowing that seed, that word, to be watered and to grow by the Holy Spirit. Epaphras was faithful in spreading the seed. And he wants us to be faithful to him and to the gospel of grace. The question as I think about that is, are you or am I? You know, this section that we read here in verses 1 through 8, the section ends with a report by Epaphras about their love in the Spirit. When Epaphras traveled all the way to Rome to tell Paul about these Christ followers, he told them that they had a spirit-produced love. The word declared to us or told us was a legal term in that day indicating that evidence that they were there, they, were spirit, they had a spirit-producing love. This means that he gave the apostle solid proof of their conversion. He also gave him solid proof of their spiritual growth and their love in the Spirit. As I think of these first three verses, or these first eight verses, and we've been looking at them over the past three weeks, you know, how do we apply that to our lives? How do we apply what we read in God's Word here in the first eight verses? What kind of application can we have to our lives? Well, I think if we look at this, we can see four actions, four action steps for us as Christians in our Christian lives that we can use to um, help, our, help our lives along or things that we can apply to our lives. The first one I want us to see is to be thankful when you pray. Instead of praying prayers that start with, Lord, please give me, why don't our prayers start with things like, thank you, God, for all that you've done? And we need to follow Paul's example and actually pray for fellow believers. You now, we'll learn more about how to do this next week in our Bible study and as we continue to, to work our way down through this passage in, in Colossians, the whole book of Colossians. 
that we will learn that how to, to be willing to be an example and to be praying for fellow believers. That coming together, I often say in our church, you know, I want us to bear one another's burdens. I want us to, to share with one another and be willing to, to uplift each other, but also be coming alongside in prayer. The second thing I think we can apply to our lives is, in each one of our lives, is there one person that you or I have a hard time loving? You know, I can... I am convinced that there is at least one person in each of our lives who we simply don't get along with. Are we willing to ask God to help us love this individual and allow us to, to love this individual and show love to this individual in a godly way? You know, we'll need God's help, won't we, to do that. And maybe you can think of somebody right now and you say, Pastor... There's absolutely no way that I can do that. There, there's absolutely no way that, that I can, can love that person. But just remember the example that we have of Jesus Christ. We see a love for, for the people of Colossae. We see Paul's love for Epaphras and what he did. We also see the love of the Colossian church the church at Colossae, for others. The third thing I want us to see in this application part is take the next steps in your journey of growth. Are you willing to take that next step? You know, the first step is always the hardest step. If there's something keeping you from bearing fruit, not only bearing fruit, but growth, make it a matter of prayer to determine with God's help how do I deal with that and how do I work with that and allow God to work? Perhaps you've simply been too busy with things that keep you from what is truly important. Maybe you've just been truly too busy and, and life has caught you. You know, I think all of us at time, from time to time say, I don't have enough time. But you know, the time never changes. In, in our service a couple week, weeks ago, I told us to just to stop and to think. And one of the parts of my message that morning was, you know, 24 hours a day, 24 hours has not changed. Seven days a week has not changed. But we've changed. So maybe, just maybe, you're simply too busy with things that keep you from what is truly important. And that's that growth spiritually. And depending on God, the fourth thing I want us to take from this, these first eight verses is determine this week to share God's grace with at least one person. Take advantage of this window of freedom we have in this country. Let's be like Epaphras and share the gospel of grace with those around us. Let's be like Epaphras and, and be willing to share. Let's be like the church at Colossae and be willing to share. Yes, Troubles will come our way. Yes, things will happen in our lives. But remember what we said this whole passage in Colossians is about as we, we look back to it. We look at that passage and we see the whole book of Colossians saying, Jesus is enough. I think too many times we put all our trust, our faith, our hope, our love all of that and all the other things around us when we should be putting it in Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? I pray that you do. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you and thank you for tonight. I thank you for our time together. We just pray for those that are watching and listening. I pray for each and every life, Lord. That as we see here in the book of Colossians, the Colossi church was a church that was willing to share, willing to understand, willing to share God's grace, willing to grow spiritually. But Lord, as things grow spiritually and things grow for you, many times there are things that come in and try to disrupt it. And throughout the book of Colossians, we see where there were false teachers that were trying to, to do their part. 
And Lord, I pray for Christian lives. I pray for those watching and listening, first of all, that they know you as their Lord and Savior. If they don't, that's the first and foremost, most important decision they will ever make in their lives. But I also pray, Lord, for our lives as Christians. I pray for our lives and our church family. Lord, that we would be willing to share your love with others. We'd be willing to reach out. We'd be willing to share the gospel, the good news with those around us. We would be willing to allow you to work and to guide and to lead in our lives. And Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for our time that we can spend in your word. Help us to grow. Help us not to just get stuck. Also, help us not to get bogged down by things that, that come to us. Things that come in our lives, Lord, that are working against you or we think are working against you. Lord, we can think of all of the bad things and, and think of things in a bad way, a bad light all the time. But help us not to do that. Help us to be willing to share and be willing to, to understand and realize who you are and who you can be in our lives. Because you are all we need. We thank you for this day. We thank you for our Bible study tonight, Lord. We just ask for continued guidance and direction in our lives and everything that we say and do. I pray for the Mount Carmel Church. I pray for Bible-believing churches, Lord, that we would stand for what we know to be true in your word. Not only stand for it, Lord, but believe what we know to be true. And have that faith and trust and hope and truly believe that in who you are. I thank and praise you for all you do. And I just pray for each and every family, each and every person represented here tonight. And help us to apply it to our lives. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to thank you for watching and listening tonight. And I just pray that you would be used by God in a great way this week. In whatever way he, or in whatever plans he has for you, because as Christians, there's a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. And that is to glorify God in all that we do and, and to spread the gospel, but be willing to share with others your love. Thank you for watching and listening tonight, and may God bless.